from undesirable to undeniable to at times insufferable, he's the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and this is his journey, and the story isn't complete, even though one of those chapters ended in the most hilarious fashion, my God, months later, I'm still laughing about how he lost to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39. But anyway, the journey began all the way back here and still has a long way to go. Possibly, maybe, finish the story. I'm John Rentham with my review of WWE's American Nightmare Becoming Cody Rhodes. Let me know your thoughts on this documentary in the comments, please. And yeah, I know, it seems like I was taking the piss out of Cody Rhodes, but I'm going to surprise you guys. I didn't mind this piece. But there were points where I'm like, okay, this got way too theatrical. This got too performative. Cody has worked very hard. I'm not going to deny that. He's fought through a lot of hardships, losing his dad, <coughs> journeying out on the only road he'd ever known. And on the Indies, he was forced to walk alone, except he had Brandy and a bunch of fans and was getting paid well. But I digress. Then he came back to WWE, tore his pec. He suffered through a lot, a lot of rehab to get back. And now who knows if he's going to beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. I mean, if he doesn't, then I really don't know what the hell we're going to do. But that's way off in the future. Actually, it's kind of sad that we're only about eight months away from that. Only eight months. Yeesh. A lot can change in eight months. Like, you can learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle up. Speaking of buckling up, let's buckle up for this. So, <clears throat> this did just pop up on Peacock. Uh, yesterday as I'm recording. I didn't get a chance to review it because I work late on Mondays and I reviewed Raw. And also I was really, really tired. So it starts with Mania 39 where I lost it. It was, as some people have called it, my Joker arc. I, I just find it hilarious that all that build and everything. And he lost <laughs> in hilarious fashion. And Rubber Chicken was in the ring. So... Some good talking heads here. Why was Hogan in this? Why? Like, genuinely, why? I am curious as to why Hogan would be in this. <laughs> Fuck Bruce Pritchard, by the way. Bruce Pritchard is a disingenuous pile of shit. And really never understood wrestling, despite the fact that Paul Bosch, uh, you know, should have been able to at least beat something into his skull. And Kevin Owens, Undertaker, it makes sense why Undertaker would talk, given the fact that he was in WWE for so many goddamn years as a performer, and I still stand by everything I said about the person, Mark Calloway, but as a performer and as uh, he has fought through many injuries, makes sense why he would talk. And then Chelsea Green, I will not say it like Samantha Irvin, just because she says it in hilarious fashion. Brandy, it makes sense why Brandy would talk. She's Cody's wife. Makes I, I'm never a fan of her being on any programming as far as a performer. But she had to be here. Of course she had to be here. Matt Cardona, who I'm a bit surprised they got him for this. But nevertheless, Rollins, DDP, Angle, and many more talking heads. So we start in Marietta, Georgia. We tell the brief story of Cody growing up. His mom talking about this. And Stephen Amell, he narrates Cody walking through the desert, looking at various pieces of his life and unearthing them from the sands of time. <laughs> Great timing, considering Stephen Amell just basically knocked the actors and writers strike. Great, great, great timing on that. He's going to be goddamn lucky to get much work, considering that he really wasn't very smart with his words. You show unity, you moron. So anyway, dusty footage. They call it Mellow Yellow. Yes, he plugged that. Boy, that's an old reference. Mellow Yellow isn't very good, by the way. Back when I drank soda, which I haven't drank for almost 10 years now, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. The MSG matches against Superstar Billy Graham where he had the title and it was taken away and they took the title away from my daddy in the garden. <clears throat> um, who is Dave LaGreca? Who is that? They treat him like he was a big deal. I'm not going to go. I don't know who the fuck he is. So, Cody was going to come back. He wanted to get into wrestling to win the title for his dad. <clears throat> or his dad was never able to. And they talk about Dusty. You know, Dusty's career in brief. And it was good that they fleshed enough of this out. 
to tell the story of Cody watching his dad grow up. Slambury 95, WCW Hall of Fame induction for Dusty. <coughs> Cody. Um, so basically, Cody and Teal, they were uh, raised I, more by Dusty. Uh, Dustin and I, I forget who the other one was. <coughs> Sorry. I forget who the other uh, kid was. I think Dusty had four kids. Maybe he had five. I'm not really sure. But Cody got into amateur wrestling. Uh, made bold claims that he was going to win state championships. He was going to do well. And apparently he was really, really good. I only go by newspaper clippings and accolades that they showed. Um, and they kept comparing him to Dusty. They being the people that knew that he was Dusty's kid. <coughs> he didn't want to go to college. He got into acting, which is what Cody does best. Cody is more of an actor than a wrestler. He's not bad at wrestling by any means, but he is more of an actor. Very theatrical, almost too theatrical, too insincere. Okay, I'll stop that. He went with his um, he went with his sister Teal. I don't know if she was a uh, success in acting. I have no idea. So, <clears throat> Dusty had money struggles because he kept living lavishly. Got in trouble with the IRS. Cody tells the story of the power game shut off and. Co uh, Dusty did a car ad basically to keep his truck just free promotion. Yeah, you can keep your truck if you do this stuff. And Dusty sold off a Rolex, pawned off a Rolex to give each kid 10 grand so they could go to LA to pursue their acting dream. Um, that's why you don't live beyond your means, even if you're a really, you know, great wrestler and a money drawing wrestler. And I'm sure, I'm sure. Dusty uh, instilled, you know, put that into his kids' minds. And actually did say at one point in <clears throat> during his last few years, like working in NXT, Vince McMahon better be glad I didn't save all of my money. So, Cody decides acting isn't for him because he flamed out. He just couldn't get roles. Went back home in 06, wanted to get into wrestling. And Bruce... Saying Dusty was on the creative staff and he had ideas, but he wasn't really much of a writer. Bruce, you never had a good idea in your head, except Kane. And that was despite the fact that you're a fucking idiot. So, OBW. Cody impressed right away, and you could see the potential there, but he was raw. He was green. He admitted that. <clears throat> he did the induction for Dusty Rhodes. For the WWE Hall of Fame 2007. And... <clears throat> I was glad they included 2014 footage of Dusty, even though Dusty was not very healthy at this point. They talk about that later. <laughs> Vince was impressed with Cody's speech. They fast-tracked him to the main roster. He debuted uh, in mid-June of 2007, just days before the dogs were found in the enclosed pool area and the garage side door was open. Wait, that's somebody else from Georgia. His first match was with Orton. Orton even said he was green as something that was green. I forget the exact quote, but man, he, there was some potential there. Michael Cole does not sound healthy. I hope he's all right. Cody wanted to be more than Dusty's kid while still honoring his legacy. Teamed with Orton, uh, legacy, barely any mention of Ted DiBiase Jr. You probably don't want to mention the DiBiase family given all the Mississippi uh, you know, tax evasion shit. And dashing Cody Rhodes. The vignettes were ridiculous, but they were entertaining because Cody made them entertaining. I do recall that being one of the few bright spots of SmackDown during that uh, period. Undashing Cody Rhodes with the mask and the paper bags and all that stuff. They glossed over that really quickly, which I'm actually kind of annoyed that they did. I wish they would have fleshed that out a little bit and maybe cut a couple other things. It's only a two-hour program to try and cover the guy <coughs> from his childhood. And cover Dusty, and then cover the influence and all that. I did not realize that it was influenced by American Psycho. Probably because I didn't put two and two together there. Or maybe two and three trying to make twelve. I didn't really get the uh, connection there. And then he had a, his first singles pay-per-view match against Rey Mysterio at Mania 27. I did not realize that was his first pay-per-view singles match. <clears throat> Then the more I thought about it, he was in Rumbles, he was in a three-way at the previous WrestleMania, and he banned tag matches. I did not realize, <laughs> and Survivor Series elimination matches, I didn't realize that was his first uh, singles pay-per-view match. 
IC title run. He should have beaten the record. Hopefully uh, by the time some people watch this a couple months later. You know, people catch up on this. Gunther will have broken the record, and Honky Tonk Man will no longer be the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion. God, I hope. You met Brandy and FCW. <coughs> they had a whirlwind romance. You know what? They're good for each other. Not going to knock that. Uh, married in 2013. And then soon after that, Battleground 2013. Him not winning the Money in the Bank briefcase is kind of a stupid idea, though. Because nothing against Sandow. And I like Sandow. Um, you know, Aaron... <coughs> Aaron Stevens, or, yeah, whatever, whatever the fuck. I mean, he was Idol Stevens before. The whole point is I would have understood uh, him winning if he had cashed in successfully, but he didn't. Cody could have been the briefcase winner, but they put him with Dustin, and, well, who was Goldust, Battleground 2013 with Dusty, won the tag titles, and he hated Stardust, who wouldn't. People say he sunk his teeth into that character. He tried to make it work. He really did try to make it work. This had to have been Vince saying, we're going to create, recreate Goldust. It's such good shit, pal. Ha ha. And the proverbial brass ring. The feud with Stephen Amell that barely had any footage shown. And <clears throat> then Dusty was pissed in his 2014 footage. Like, how can you not see this? Are you guys blind? Cody <clears throat> was thinking about leaving but wasn't going to quit was going to write out his contract and do his best. Dusty. Then they talked about Dusty training kids in NXT. And there's kind of a parallel of Dusty not approving of Dustin's marriage to Terry. Um, I don't know whose fault that was, that that didn't end well. <coughs> the marriage, I mean. I'm not passing blame one way or another. Glad Terry seems to be doing well, though. Um, but between that, Dusty and you know Dustin not talking for a while, and Dusty training a bunch of kids in NXT while Cody's on the road. And Dusty referring to a lot of those people as his kids. And even Sammy was like, we know we're not his kids, it's just an expression, you're his kid. And, and Sammy wasn't being a dick about that, and I don't think any of them were being dicks about that. Rollins even said he worked with Dusty for a number of years. Um, Cody felt slighted. Cody <clears throat> praised him though, praised him plenty. And then, I'm not going to spend too much time on this part because I'm not going to cry on camera, but Dusty's death, it is still something that hits hard just because I knew based on seeing how he looked that he wasn't that healthy, I didn't realize it was that bad. Hearing Cody describe it, and it just, Jesus, I'm just... Ooh, and Cody needed to have Stardust to heal. He didn't want to go back to me and Cody. Now, I don't know if that's just him telling the company lie or that's how he actually feels. Sometimes it's hard to filter fact through fiction. Whatever helped him cope, that's what matters. Everyone was affected by Dusty's death. And to think, it was Dusty and then Roddy Piper within like a couple months of each other. And I think Vern Gagne a bit before that. Because Vern Gagne, I think, died in April. Um, But then Cody speaks... <coughs> You know, at oh, the the dusty eulogy part, I didn't realize that they had footage of that. I know it was done with the family's blessing. I didn't like that. I really didn't like that. I thought that was I thought that was too personal. But again, I'm sure it was done with the family's blessing. Um, <clears throat> and then the 2015 match, I believe it was it was Cody. <laughs> Was it Cody and Barrett against a Mel and somebody? I'm, I'm genuinely trying to remember that match. I mean, I probably should have looked that up. But it's like 20, 2015 SummerSlam wasn't great. And then Mania 32 was it. <clears throat> he had to walk through the exit door. So much symbolism and so much desert stuff and it was stupid. If they had not had this in the goddamn documentary, would it have mattered? No, they had to pump this shit up. So, <clears throat> Cody was talking about being checked out. Putting whiskey in a mixer and then Gatorade on top of it. He would just drink. That's how checked out he was. And then he left. Brandy was happy. The mother. Mother, however. <laughs> that mother wasn't very happy. That mother wasn't very happy at all. She was worried. <clears throat> Hogan's like, oh, he's betting on himself. Hogan acting like once he achieved success and, you know, the AWA, 
that he never looked that he you know had to go through some hard times like in WCW when he got such a lucrative contract. Cody had no such luxury because there was no WCW. There was no competition. People say there was Impact. Like I said, there was no competition. Um, <coughs> Impact, Ring of Honor, they were having their own issues even though they still had fans. And it was <coughs> cool to see, you know, all the people, you know, all, all the people that he faced, faced something against Kurt Angle, how he became the American Nightmare, <coughs> um... Bruce Pritchard talking about this stuff. Uh, you know, Bruce Pritchard, just anytime he chimed in, I just wanted to slap him. He became the American Nightmare in New Japan um, at Wrestle Kingdom 11 in, um, it was 2017? 2017, I'm trying to remember the numbers in my head. So, <clears throat> that was cool to see his entrance. He carved his own path, he opened the forbidden door. We get it! Impact ROH, he could go anywhere, he could do anything, he was getting paid well, and he was honoring his commitments but he was proving <clears throat> that he could do anything. <clears throat> like defy gravity and float around because you said anything. Ah, MST3K. Being the elite footage with the noted right wing crackpots, the Young Bucks. Had to get that shot in because the Bucks are not good Christians. Because they're really. With their kind, it, there's no such thing as a good Christian. So, with their kind, I emphasize. I was surprised that they showed footage of All In. I'm glad they did. I'm glad they were able to show that. Cody was determined to make it work. It was cool we got to see the footage. Ray talked about it because he was in the main event. Hands up if you forgot that Ray was in the main event of All In. There was a whole lot of shit going on there. So, <clears throat> the talk of AEW. Brandy should have never been on camera. Uh, becoming a father. Cody, not Brandy. That would have been weird. Cody became a mother. And... Cody obviously got emotional. Look, as long as he raises a kid, right? Doesn't say cry more lib, then, you know, that's all right. But, you know, he would. They didn't talk too much about uh, AEW, obviously, because Tony Khan owns the footage. And why dwell too much on it? Cody said he left because of a personal issue. He didn't want, certain, he didn't want this part edited that he can't, and he won't say why he left, but he'll say the reasons why not, or why he didn't leave. Um, it wasn't because of money, it wasn't because of that, it was because of a personal issue. Also, an NDA is preventing him from talking about this stuff. I personally think that he had had it being in a certain environment and got an opportunity to go back to WWE. He shouldn't have been faulted for that, just like people shouldn't be faulted for going from WWE to AEW or vice versa. As long as they're happy, it doesn't matter. So, Vince and Bruce flew to Cody's house. So they could get him back. And the champion of a secondary promotion. He didn't want to be that. And that's what pissed people off that Triple H said. And man, there were some cruel things said about Triple H. And I've said plenty of things about Triple H. And I stand by every single one of them. But if AEW was the established promotion. And WWE was the upstart. And, you know, AEW, and AEW did this piece. And they talk about the champion of a secondary promotion and him going to AEW. My point is, is that if the roles are, if the companies are reversed, then would fans still get upset? Yes, because tribalism unfortunately exists in wrestling, and you can enjoy wrestling regardless of what promotion it is. Unless it's deathmatch heavy, and then I question that because that's not wrestling. <laughs> it's not wrestling, basically. That's what it's not. Um... So, that pissed people off. The Triple H said that, oh well, it's true. <laughs> AEW is doing very well. They've been around this amount of time. WWE's been around this amount of time. It's just facts. It's just facts. So, and people can prefer whatever the fuck they want. Match with Rollins and Mania 38. Huge pop. Big old pop. His mother couldn't make it. Brandy was there. They took the bus, and then he tore his pack before Hell in a Cell. He was bound and determined to go through with the match. It was uncomfortable to see. I stand by that it was stupid for him to fucking do that. Yes, the show must go on. He couldn't tear it anymore. I get it. There were people that felt it was great that he got it out. To me, it was stupid. Did he set his rehab back? That's not up for me to goddamn decide, because I don't know. <laughs> but was it something that he should have fucking done? Hell no. But nevertheless... 
He, you know, is trained at the Nightmare Factory. Uh, he's he has doubts about how the crowd will receive him when he comes back. He had to lean up instead of bulking up, which is probably smart. Not only is he in his mid to later 30s, but after an injury like that, doesn't hurt to lean up. <coughs> Rumble return at number 30, where he beat number one because Cody is a baby face. But yeah, Gunther chopping him safely because Gunther can do that. And then the roll on the Mania 39, and Brandy and Liberty in, uh, you know, at the arena. The rubber chicken, because Cody lost, and all that stuff. Triple H need to remind Cody that, you know, Dusty's proud of him. That he needed to hear that. Because Cody probably was deflated. Oh, this sucks, this sucks. And if he deserved to be champion, it would have actually, you know, sucked more, but he doesn't. And then the retrospective of the journey. And will Cody become champion? Yeah, probably. Will I buy into it? No, because I don't really buy into much of anything that Cody says. That being said, there are people that really enjoy Cody's journey. I didn't mind this piece, but it wasn't great. Those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.